like if I'm honest with you right now, I I'm I'm waking up at four a.m. some mornings because I've got so much in my mind trying to pass in the pandemic, and I and and I have this toolkit for like Jay, like this is your body telling you, you got to slow down, and you know all these things. So I'm I'm interacting with these ideas, but really it was that that really foundational beginning that conversation was with you from a distance for that book. Jason, I'm so, so thank glad. you for that. Yeah, oh, you're so welcome. And you describe it so beautifully. Um, I, 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 I've kind of fall, fallen a bit under the spell of your description. So thank you. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I'm so glad you actually brought this up because now that I teach in a seminary, I realize that probably the, 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 the primary duty I have to students, and so this will speak to many of the young leaders that are listening to this podcast, you can go, uh, I, I have never seen a generation more, more gifted than, than you. <laughs> like, I don't know what that is. If, if you've just kind of evolved to a higher state of, 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 of you know, uberness, brightness, awesomeness or something. But I have not met a more gifted, um, extraordinarily uh, skilled, um, passionate generation than, than what you represent, Jason. So I don't, I feel coming to the classroom, I'm 60 years old, that there's, there's certain things that I'm just being left in the dust on. But the one thing that I would, I would I, I'm saying more and more and with more and more sense of, of urgency is that if you don't lay that foundation early, you will burn out. If you don't get that foundation of intimacy with God, of slowing down, of not of of refusing to de derive your worth, your value, your purpose from your gifting and your ambition and your accomplishment, you have to actually steadfastly refuse that. And, and the earlier you refuse it, the better, mm. because right now you, Jason, and your generation are so gifted. Um, and you've got so much energy in the tank, man, I want to nap every day for an hour. I really do. I just, you know, like, and so, so there's all the sort of limitations that I'm facing at this point, but I, it took me too long in my life to figure out what you just said you, you figured out early. And I'm, I'm great. Well, I'm at war that. with it. I'm at okay, war with good. it yeah. because you laid a foundation. It really did save me. Like it saved me because essentially I started seeing warning signs. It's like, it's like somehow when I was reading it, it, and for those that don't know, to call it a book about Sabbath would be not saying enough about it, but it's a book about Sabbath, about rest. And um, this is the rest of God. And um, you painted this picture of like Jesus not being in a hurry. And like, well, there's, yeah. it's amazing you picture. I, and my, I have a new book. I'm not here to promote my books called God Walk. And if I, if, yeah. I, if, I, if I have any sense that there's a sequel to the rest of God it would be God walk mm. similar kind of themed around. Why don't you notice stuff? Why don't you notice the flowers? Why don't you notice the grass? Why don't you slow down? Why don't you hear God? Why don't you move at the speed of your soul? But I mean, I think that, you know, I looking back all these years later on rest of God, I sort of see it as a poem to Sabbath. Mm. Um, I mean, it's, it's prose, but there's, uh, I, I, as you know, I, I, I tried to write it in a way that was more evocative and, um, try to sort of in the language itself and the rhythms of the language to capture the beauty of this gift of Sabbath. Uh, but, but, but partly because I wanted, uh, and I'm so grateful to, to hear how that book had an impact on you because I really did want for the reader, whatever the age to be a sense of the welcome that hmm. Sabbath God through, through this gift of Sabbath was, was providing come on to me all you are weary and heavy laden. And so again, I would reinforce with especially your younger leaders. So I'm sure there's a few older leaders listening to this could, could probably hear this and be reminded of it. That that really uh, there comes a day when nobody's phoning you to come, you know, play on their worship team or <laughs> preach at their web, you know, preach at their their conference or whatnot. Um, and then you're not being uh, you're not being hailed for your accomplishments, the church you built or the books you wrote. Uh, and it'll be a very, very lonely existence if you predicated your sense of who you are on all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, what actually will make for a rich old age is that you've gone into this uh, intimacy with, with Christ and you've nurtured that and fostered that. 
all the days of your life. And I can hardly think of a discipline outside of the nuns you named, the, the life of prayer and the life of scripture. Uh, aside from those, I think the number one thing that actually nurtures and fosters that union with God is Sabbath. 